Hello and welcome back to Steam with Steve. Today we're going to go through the next step in our binary math um, operations and we're going to learn it four different operations that you need to know, which is AND, OR, NOT, or XOR. So let's jump on in and have a go. So <coughs> these are all known as Boolean operators. Now what they mean um, is the way that you can join your zeros, your ones uh, together in different unique sort of ways. So AND means that both have to be true, otherwise the circuit doesn't go on. Or means either of them have to be true and then the circuit will go on. Not means that you flip them. And then exclusive or is a little bit different. It means that you either have it or you don't, but you can't have both on at the same time. So these were all invented by George Bull, who just, who's a mathematician way back in the, day, in the day. And what he found is that logic and math have this little equivalence behind them. And he found that all logic functions can be determined using three primary Boolean logic operators, which is AND, OR, and NOT. So see, I even used AND just then. So AND narrows your options. So this and this has to be true. So a simple example I usually do is you can have a burger and fries. So if you just got the burger or you just got the fries, you wouldn't be happy. You have to get both, otherwise it's not um, what you asked for. OR broadens your options. So see if we just said the burger or the fries. So if you just got the burger, you would be happy. If you just got the fries, you'd be happy. And if you got both, you would be happy as well. And then not does the opposite. So I don't want the burger, you don't want it. How two choices work if we had a little true uh, tree diagram. <coughs> We've got true and false. So if A is false and then um, A is, uh, B is false, so they both don't exist, that would be false than false. If we went across here with false than true, that's the same as false than true. True than false is the same as true false and then true true is the same as true. So we can represent these in a truth table, which is pretty simple as false, 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 true, true, false, and then true, true. Hopefully by now you've seen the binary number math pattern in that. So that's the same as zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one. If you swap the um, Fs for zeros and the Ts for um, ones. Then we did a quick little Venn diagram. So a Venn diagram basically is a square box with circles in it and the circles represent the different events that you're gonna deal with. So all the possible combinations for a deck of cards is you have uh, 52 different cards with four different suits and then 13 cards in each suit, um, ranging from two to 10 and then the jack, queen, king and the ace. So if we wanna do a Venn diagram of this and just trust me with this, this helps understanding and and or is you would have all of these different options. So if we did the two, the two circles of an ace and a spade, the only time you have an ace and a spade is this middle part here, this overlap. This part here is what we call Vespa Pisces, and that's when both are true. So the ace and a spade is that guy there. If you wanna do just aces, it's the yellow area. So when we say just aces, it doesn't include the ace and spade. So that Pac-Man looking shape on the, the left there or the crescent moon doesn't include the ace of spades. But when we can include the ace of spades, that would make the full circle, which represents all of the aces. Then if you have all the spades, you should have the 12 cards that are left over in the suit, but they don't include the ace of spades. So like I said before, if you want all the spades, it includes that green area over there. And then lastly, you have every other card just dumped around the edge. And then that's what is not an ace or a spade. To do this with bugs, just so you've seen this, if we did the everything that's green and spotty, so we've got green and then we've got the spotty, there's only one guy that's green and spotty. Then if we had all the things that are just green but not spotty, and notice how I'm starting to use some words here, so green and not spotty, that links into that. And then everything that's um, green, uh, sorry, is spotty and not green goes over here. So that's the red and the purple. And everything that's not green and not spotty is everything that's around the edge. So hopefully that's helped get your head around that. Then I did one with red and big things. So if you've got Santa, he's red and big. If you've got Jabba the Hutt, he's just big, but he's not red. If you've got things that are red, you would have that. And then if you've got things that are not red and not big, you would have Fanta and Tay Tay on the edge. <coughs> so the AND operator is both all or the intersection. So AND makes your spe 
statement's way more specific. It needs to be this and this. Um, please don't play the motorbike game and don't play Fortnite. All right, so when um, it will only return results if both the conditions are true. So using and narrows your options down. So if it's red and big, it's that little vesk of Pisces in the middle or that overlap. So like I said before, that would be Santa. If we said the green and spotty, there is only one thing that is green and spotty. So see how that narrows or lessens the options that you have available to you. So in this, just pause the video, see if you can work out what color would be A and B. Cool, so hopefully you worked out that it was just purple or that Vesco Pisces in the middle. <coughs> have a go at this, this is pretty cool. So what we're gonna do is change the code in Python. Um, just make A is equal to false, B is equal to false and change the A and B and build your own little truth table with that. Hopefully you'll see when you cap, um, output it, this is the table you'll get. So pause the video, have a little play and see what happens. So what you should have found if you did false, then false, false, then true, true, then false, and then true, then true. False and false gave you false, false and true should have given you false, true and false should have given you false, and then true and true should have given you true. <coughs> cool. So with the all operator a little bit different, this is the union, so this is when you bind things together. So this will turn results if either of the conditions are true. So using or will widen your options. And then this is what's really important, or includes and, so that overlap in between. So it's really important when we say or, it doesn't mean exclusive or, it means or. So if you get the ham hamburger or the fries, there's four options, you don't get anything, you get just the fries, you get just the hamburger, or you get both, you would be happy. If I said I'm gonna give you the fries or the burger, and you got both, that meets the condition, which is something that's a little bit different for people to understand. So if I say something's green or spotty, if it's green and spotty, that is green or spotty. If I say um, anything that's just green is green or spotty, and if I say anything that's just spotty is actually meets that condition. So or widens your options. So pause the video and just think about what colors would be or in this. Hopefully you picked up there would have been blue, purple, or red. Those were the colors that match. So now in Python, just try and build this little bit of code and change the values and put them in the little table to see what happens. So you would have gone false, 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 true, true, false, and then true, true. Hopefully when you did it, false, false was false, false, true gave you true, true, false gave you true, and then true, true gave you true. What you should find here, the unique case as opposed to and is when they're all false and then the circuit doesn't complete, basically. The next operator was not, so that's negation. So not makes your st um, statements more specific and returns the opposite of the condition. So not will exclude options as you go. So neither of the statements that you use and it's a series of Boolean statements that happen. So if we said that everything's not big, would be everything that's outside. So like a little invisible fortress, of that operator. So everything that's not green would be all the spotty, um, so the red and the purple spotty things, but then also that's everything that's outside around the edge. So everything that's not green is just the opposite like that. So if we had everything that's not A in this case, pause the video and try and work out what colors would be involved. Cool, so hopefully you picked up it was the red and the green. So have a go now in Python, build this little bit of code, change the A from false to true and see what happens. And hopefully what you see is it just flips the print statement. So another thing that you might have heard of is you can't have your cake and eat it too. So when we have events, they need to be, um, they can't occur at the same time. And this is sort of ties into the XOR operator. So exclusive or basically means that you can't have both at the same time. So exclusive or is exactly the same as or, except it doesn't include both. So it widens your options, but it removes the and from it. So if we think of that as a picture, it actually removes the vesper Pisces in the middle. That's basically what XOR does. So everything that's red, exclusive or with, um, sorry, that should say big, is Jabba the Hutt and the red things. So if we went green, XOR spotty, is we would have all the things that were just green but not spotty and then everything that was spotty but not um, green. 
So A, X or B would give you the red and the um, blue area. So a little summary so that you've got it. If you do and, means that both conditions are met, which means that overlap. If you do or, means that either the conditions are met, so then you get everything, so it widens your options. Not means that the condition is never met, so it's everything that's outside. And then XOR is like OR, except it removes the AND in the middle. So there's a little challenge there for you. Have a pause of the video and think about what colors happen. So the first one is not a ninja. So that would be everything that's blue or green, because the ninja is included inside of that. Exclusively a ninja or a turtle would be the red and the um, blue areas. Sorry, you can't see that what it says there, but it's neither a ninja nor um, a turtle, which means everything outside the box, which is the green area. And a ninja and a turtle, or neither a ninja or, nor a turtle would be the purple and then the green area outside. You can also have multiple conditions. So this is with three events. Hopefully you start seeing a pattern here. <coughs> So with two of one event, there was just either a circle or not a circle. With two events, there was four areas. So the Vespa Pisces in the middle, the two Pac-Mans, and then the box around it. When you have three events, you get eight different areas. And then that's the, the binary pattern that we talked about ages ago at the very beginning. So if you had four events, you would then have um, 16 areas that you'd be dealing with, which then gets a lot more complicated sort of putting it. So if you had everything that's an even diamond and less than six, there's only the two and the four that matches all of those conditions. So notice the words there, even diamond, it's even and a diamond and it's less than six. See how that's narrowed the options down? Then if you did even diamonds would be that area there. Then you would have even diamonds, uh, even numbers that are less than six. Diamonds that are less than six can go there. Any of the diamonds that are left over goes into that little Batman symbol. And then all the even numbers that are left over goes in there. And then everything that's less than six goes into that space down the bottom. In the black area is basically everything that's left over. So see how there was eight different sort of scenarios that happened with that. So my favorite pizza is La Piazza. Hopefully I get a little plug into Mario's Pizza on, and Broad Beach on the Gold Coast. They make the best pizza on the planet, which is this thing called La Piazza. So in La Piazza, you have ham, you have pineapple, and you have mushrooms. You also have a bit of prawns, but we won't talk about that because that doesn't help with my diagram. So to make the La Piazza, basically you got these ingredients. So you have ham, mushrooms, and then the pineapples, which is represented by those th three separate circles. So pause the video, think about how you might be able to do those. So hopefully you worked out to make La Piazza, it's basically the overlap, that brown area in the middle there. There's only one way to make La Piazza. You have to have ham, mushroom, and the pineapple. To make a pizza with only one topping would be all the little um, uh, primary colors, the yellow area, the red area, and then the purple area, because it would only have one ingredient. To make a pizza with at least two of the toppings makes that little um, try signal because you can have two, which is the green area, the purple and the orange area, but it also includes the La Piazza area. And then to make a pizza that only u that uses ham and pineapple would include La Piazza, but also the green area at the bottom. So there's a little Venn diagram that comes with this um, for homework. I would have a play with that, trying to get your head around how these Venn diagrams work, because the more that you understand Venn diagrams, the easier and and all becomes because you understand how um, you've got a real tangible graphical way to see it. So that's it from me. If you did enjoy this video, please give us a like and subscribe down below as it does help with the YouTube algorithm. And yeah, see you next time on Steam with Steve. Adios.